Well, welcome to European Journeys. This is the fifth stage of a journey that uh, follows the footsteps of Paul in Italy, the Apostle Paul, that is. And for this stage, we are going to visit now Borgo Faiti. Borgo Faiti is a small town of the region of Latium in the province of Latina. It was founded during the fascist regime in the 20th century, actually, and it is the result of the integral drainage of the marshes that were here before. So, with such a young history, Borgo Faiti does not seem to have much to tell us about the ancient times which we are exploring. But actually, a few ruins reveal that before the foundation of the town, an earlier settlement had already existed here in Roman times. Well, the main square of Borgo Faiti is called Piazza San Paolo Apostolo, that is the square of St. Paul Apostle. And there are very good reasons for it being named in honor of the Apostle Paul. And to discover why, we will walk for a few hundred meters along the Strada Statale 7, that is the state road number 7, towards Terracina, the town of Terracina, until we reach a bridge crossing the small river called Cavata. The bridge itself is almost unnoticeable. In fact, it looks like a very banal bridge, as many others can be found in Europe. But seen from the shores of the Cavata, we quickly realize that this is actually an ancient Roman bridge. So here we go. We have one of the ruins, one of the few ruins left here in this area that uh, testify to Roman times. Well, as you may have guessed, the Statale 7, the road, is actually nothing else than the ancient Via Appia which is a road that we met in our first stage in Velletri, if you remember. As for the Roman bridge, it is almost the only architectural remnant of what used to be a relay for travelers called Foro Appio in Italian, that is the Forum of Appius. Well, so here is the reason why Paul is honored with a square in his name in Borgo Faiti. Because Foro Appio is one of the places that Luke mentions in his records of Paul's journey to Rome, in the Book of Acts, of course. Mentions of the Forum of Appius can actually be found even in earlier sources than the Bible. And uh, this leads us to believe that this was an important relay for travelers in ancient times. For example, the 1st century BC Roman poet Horace wrote about Foro Appio in his satires as he recorded his journey from Rome to Brundisium, that is Brindisi today in Apulia, which are in fact the two cities at the extremities of the Via Appia. Well, his accounts give us an idea of the depravity that seemed to be commonplace in Foro Appio. He wrote, and I quote, with strong temptation on either side of the road, with inns commodious, snug and warm, end quote. So a century after Horace, Paul left Puteoli and traveled by foot to Rome and thus crossed this small bridge. And contrary to Horace, Luke does not write anything about the depravity of this place, but rather he tells us that Paul found here a reason for encouragement. And here is what he wrote, and I quote, And so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters there had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far as the Forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. And at the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged." End quote. Well, it is not difficult to imagine how the sight of these fellow Christians coming from Rome to meet him would have encouraged him. In fact, Paul had already walked about 150 kilometers, that is 95 miles, since Puteoli, and Rome was still more than 70 kilometers away. Paul was probably very tired by now, and remembering that he journeyed as a prisoner, he might have felt discouragement as well. So for these reasons, we can easily imagine that Paul was greatly encouraged to see them coming to greet him. However, Paul had never visited Rome, nor been to Italy before. And so why is it that Christians from Rome were so eager to see Paul? that they came to meet him on his way to the capital, so far away from the capital still. How could they have known about him? Well, three years earlier, Paul had already written a letter to the Church of Rome while he was still in Corinth. The letter, which became known as the Epistle of Paul to the Romans, 
was probably one of Paul's writings which explained the gospel most fully and clearly. While there are no records which tell us how the epistle was received by the church in Rome, we can safely assume that it did influence them a lot. And this was such a powerful epistle that in later centuries, some of the most prominent men in the history of Europe saw their lives being transformed by reading or hearing the, the epistle of Paul to the Romans. Well, let me mention three of them very briefly. Firstly, in the 4th century, a man sitting in a garden in Milan, in northern Italy, was crying out to God to remove the uncleanness of his heart. And suddenly he heard a child singing, Tolle lege, tolle lege, which means simply take up and read, take up and read. So the man took the Bible and he opened it in the epistle of Paul to the Romans. And there he read, and I quote, Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. End quote. Well, as he read this passage, the man, who was none other than Augustine of Hippo, had a conversion experience. And he later wrote about this experience that, and I quote, instantly after the sentence ended, by a light, as it were, of security into my heart, all the gloom of doubt vanished away, end quote. Well, later on, Augustine and his writings would have such an influence on Europe that he is rightly considered to be the father of Western civilization. Secondly, in the beginning of the 16th century, a monk in Saxony, Germany, anxious to find righteousness before God for himself, read the following words from the same epistle, and I quote again, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. End quote. Well, this monk was obviously Martin Luther, the father of the Reformation, which was at the heart of the transition of Europe from the medieval to the modern era. Well, when he wrote about what he called his tower experience, Martin Luther famously declared, and I quote, I felt that I was altogether born again and had entered paradise itself through open gates, end quote. Or the third man, nearly three centuries later, was attending a church meeting led by Moravian missionaries in London. And there he heard the words of Luther's preface of the Epistle of Paul to the Romans. Well, as he heard the words, the man had a conversion experience as well, in which he described that he felt his heart strangely warmed. He added, and I quote, I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death, end quote. Well, the man, who was none other than John Wesley, was used by God, to become the father of the Methodist revival at a time when England was drowning into depravity. This revival is known to be at the heart of far-reaching reforms in the British Empire, such as, for example, the abolition of slavery. So, the fathers of respectively Western civilization, of the Reformation, and of the Methodist revival, all held in common of having had a conversion experience through Paul's epistle to the Romans. So could it be that this same episode had had a huge impact in the lives of the first Christians in Rome? We can believe so. And so it would therefore not be surprising that these people found it worthwhile to walk over 70 kilometers from Rome to Foro Apio to finally meet the author of the letter face to face. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European journeys. <laughs>